This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Thanks for joining us here at 11 o'clock. I'm Nicole Griffin. Tonight, RTV6 is working for you, getting answers about a social media post making the rounds. In that post, a woman says she was harassed, followed, and recorded by several men she did not know at Castleton Square Mall. It's been shared nearly 1,400 times since she posted it. Now tonight, RTV6's Cornelius Hawker is asking police about the incident and finding out what you should do if you find yourself in a similar situation. People are out and about doing some shopping after the holidays. Some of them who go to Castleton Square Mall may think twice about trying a sample from one of the kiosks. That's because this Facebook post has been shared by dozens of people. In it, the woman claims she and her friends were harassed and followed by men working the booths on two occasions. Ultimately, coming to the conclusion the men were involved with sex trafficking. Indianapolis Metro Police Department says no one reported this incident to them, despite the poster saying she did. So police have no way of proving it actually happened. I talked to Shalonda Gilbert, who was out shopping with her daughter and her daughter's best friend, about this today. No, no issues at all. It was a safe environment. We felt pretty safe. Shalonda makes sure these young ladies know not everything you see on social media is true. I just tell them to be careful about, you know, myths and things that are not real and not happening in the world. However, she doesn't want them to throw caution to the wind. Watch their surroundings when they go to the bus stop and just be aware. As far as being nervous about going to places like the mall, Shalonda thinks people should take a breath and try to look at all the safety measures put in place to protect you. It's well lit, cameras everywhere. Um, there's no fright out here to me. Working for you in Castleton. Cornelius Hawker, RTV6. Cornelius, thank you. We did reach out to the mall about this incident, but they had IMPD contact us. We also reached out to the woman who originally posted it, but she has not gotten back to us just yet. Police want to remind everyone, if you see something suspicious or think something bad is happening, call them immediately so they can investigate it. Developing tonight, we now have a timeline from Metro Police detailing the moments that led up to an officer involved shooting this morning on the south side. Just before 3 a.m., Southeast District officers were dispatched to an attempted carjacking. The victim said two men attempted to take his vehicle at gunpoint. The victim drove to the intersection of Wedgwood Drive and Lacey Drive to wait on officers. Then around 3.30 a.m., the responding officers tell dispatch they spotted two guys matching the suspect's description walking along Stop 11 Road. Police say one had a rifle and did not comply with the officer's commands to put it down. As additional units responded, the officers fired their weapons at the man, hitting him and disarming him. The second person who police say was a juvenile complied and was taken into custody. Medics arrived on scene and took the suspect who was shot to the hospital in critical condition. Two investigations are now underway, a criminal investigation and an internal affairs investigation to ensure the officers complied with department policy. Tonight, Beach Grove police are investigating a shooting that left a man hospitalized this afternoon. Officers responded to an apartment near 9th and Albany Street around 115. Police say a 52 year old man was shot in the knee and taken to the hospital. Officers on scene told RTV6 it was likely drug related and not a random incident. A woman who was a woman was arrested on the scene, but she had an outstanding warrant at that apartment, but her arrest was unrelated to the shooting. Police don't believe the public is in any danger tonight. Let's get to check your first forecast with meteorologist Kyle Mounts. And Nicole, we've started to see a few scattered showers move through parts of central Indiana this evening. And you can see on Storm Team 6 radar, one wave has lifted off to the northeast. And we've got just a few more light showers out there for you this evening. Moving into Bloomfield and Greene County, also parts of Hendricks County and around Greencastle. But the wall of rain sits back to the west in Illinois and Missouri. All of this is going to be sliding our way. And in the meantime, we are in the warmer side of of this storm system with temperatures in the 60s right now in Evansville, 55 in downtown, 54 in Columbus, and 50 degrees in Peru. I don't expect those temperatures are going to move very much here as we go through the overnight, but rain chances will be increasing by 4 a.m. Fairly widespread rain. Don't be surprised if you hear even a rumble of thunder during the overnight. We'll continue with some rain, a fairly soggy start to our Sunday. So you're going to need the umbrella and allow yourself a little bit of extra time as you head out the door. But we do have some dry time in the Sunday forecast. We'll talk about 
about that. Also turning windy and colder here for the end of 2019, plus a look at your New Year's Eve forecast. Kyle, thank you. A small plane crash in Lafayette, Louisiana has left five dead and several others injured, including a sports reporter on her way to watch a college football game. Here's ABC's Trevor Alt tonight with what we know. A horrifying scene in Lafayette, Louisiana. A twin engine plane with six people on board crashing shortly after takeoff Saturday morning. We have five individuals who are deceased as a result of the plane crash. The sixth individual is right now in the hospital being treated. Witnesses saw the plane struggling before slamming into a power line not far from an apartment building, then bursting into flames as it crashed. It just went up into flames and the whole flame like rolled and tumbled straight through the field. The fuselage nearly hitting a post office, blowing out windows and setting this car on fire. Also had one individual that was in a car or near a car uh, that was impacted by the event who's also being treated for their injuries. There were two other individuals in the post office who went to the hospital because of smoke inhalation. The Piper Cheyenne was headed to DeKalb Peachtree Airport outside Atlanta. The passengers headed to today's Peach Bowl between Louisiana State and Oklahoma. Among those who died, Carly McCord, the daughter-in-law of LSU offensive coordinator Steve Emsminger, the coach wiping away tears just before the game. LSU head coach Ed Orgeron addressing the tragedy after his team's victory. He's getting the game ball tonight. What a tremendous, tremendous LSU Tiger. He called a great game tonight. Also killed in the crash, Gretchen David Vincent and her 15-year-old son Walker, Robert Von Crisp II, and the plane's pilot Ian Biggs. The NTSB is now traveling to Lafayette to lead the investigation, hoping to determine the cause of the crash. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Trevor, thank you. Today, a group of more than 100 people protested on Monument Circle, joining nationwide protests held in recent weeks. The rally aimed to bring awareness to what protesters call religious discrimination and attacks on civil rights in India. A new citizenship law is triggering the protest. It aims to provide an expedited path to citizenship for certain religious groups in India, but not Muslims. Those against it say it violates India's secular constitution and have filed challenges with the Supreme Court. Many of those who gathered in Indianapolis today are Indian Americans concerned about the current situation and deadly protests in India. What we are afraid of, India may not be a free democratic country that India is known for in the world. So it's important that we stand together uh, even over in another country when somebody's uh, set up with a religion as their criteria uh, to be discriminated against. And the ripple effect that it has in our country with the demonstrations that are happening all over the United States. And that we as Sikhs and Christians and Jews and others stand together uh, with our Muslim brothers to say uh, we should be valued for who we are and our religions are all should be seen equal for our country and our government. India's Prime Minister has defended the citizenship law and accused the opposition of pushing the country into a fear psychosis. Protesters plan to continue holding rallies until the new law is withdrawn. After a recount, Democrats will enter 2020 with a city council majority in Republican Vice President Mike Pence's hometown. Democrats captured their 4-3 to three Columbus City Council major majority in November's election. It comes as they defeated two Republican incumbents. A recount was completed earlier this month but did not change the results. Democrat Jerome Wood says the council majority is a good change in direction for Columbus. Still to come, a family saw it on TV and thought it would be a fun gift for their kids, but they say that gift almost destroyed their home. Sometimes it really is the thought that counts, but just because you don't like your Christmas gift doesn't mean you should count on being disappointed. Ahead, getting the most out of your gift return. Kyle. And Sunday is a Storm Team 6 alert day. Make sure that you're connected as you're out there running errands or traveling with the free RTV6 and Storm Shield apps. I'll have a closer look at that timeline. You're watching RTV6 News at 11. You see a mutation? Ask your doctor about Picray. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. 
Tonight, friends and family of Heidi Broussard are remembering the young mother who went missing only to be found dead a few days later. Heidi was laid to rest in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Here's Zachary Keish with the details. Friends and family gathering in Lake Charles, Louisiana on Saturday to say goodbye to Heidi Broussard. The young Texas mother disappeared with her infant daughter, Margot on December 12th after dropping her six-year-old son off at school in Austin, Texas. Broussard's body was found a week later inside the trunk of a car outside of this Houston home. She'd been strangled, her baby found unharmed inside of that house. The horrific discovery leading to the arrest of Broussard's friend, Megan Firamuska, now being held on a $600,000 bond charged with two counts of kidnapping and one count of tampering with Broussard's corpse. But no murder charges have been filed against Faramuska. Her attorneys say they have no information from the Travis County District Attorney's Office regarding additional charges. In a statement, her defense team saying they are proud to represent her and anxious to review the evidence collected thus far, adding, we are in the beginning stages of a very long process, but there are many questions that need to be answered. Heidi's friends say they are devastated by her death. Heidi, to me, is loving. She's sincere. She's caring. And people wonder why she has so many best friends. It's because... Everyone was drawn to her. Earlier this week, just hours before Christmas Eve, baby Margot was reunited with her father, Heidi's fiance, Shane Carey, who posted this photo simply saying, baby Margot is home. That's the best thing that, you know, could ever happen. Fiera Muska is scheduled to make her first formal court appearance in the case before a judge on January 2nd. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. Zachary, thank you. A close call for an Illinois family on Christmas. They say a popular drone toy they bought for their kids nearly set their house on fire. Celeste Robinson and her husband plugged the as seen on TV UFO drones in on Christmas Eve. They wanted the drones ready so the kids could use them first thing in the morning. A bit later, they say they heard a strange hissing noise. They walked to the counter to find the drones hot to the touch. They unplugged the drones and that's when Celeste says one of the drones burst into flames and she threw it on the floor. They were able to put out the flames, but say this situation could have ended in a much different way. We were so blessed that he heard the noise and we checked it out because we would have been asleep and it could have been our house. It could have been our lives. According to the instructions, the drone takes 40 minutes to become fully charged. The Robinsons say they were only plugged in for a half hour. NASA astronaut Christina Cook made history today. She now has broken the record for the longest single space flight by a woman. Cook has been on the International Space Station for 289 days now, exceeding the record of Peggy Whitson, who spent 288 days in space. She will stay on the station until February 2020. That time frame will fall just shy of the longest single space flight by a NASA astronaut. Cook says she hopes the record for longest space flight by a female astronaut will be exceeded again as soon as possible. Now to a post Christmas ritual returning the gifts you didn't want. Rebecca Jarvis breaks down how to make the most of your holiday returns. It's the most wonderful time of the year for returns. This holiday season, Americans are predicted to return a record $100 billion worth of gifts. But not all policies are created equal. Check the retailer's website. Some stores actually give you more time for holiday returns than you have until early January. So you can just double check ahead of time to know the date that you have to make your return. A number of the largest retailers, including Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and Amazon, extend return policies over the holidays, some up to an additional 60 days. But beware, not all products are included under that umbrella. One standout being electronics. And what if you lost that receipt? Try to make the return as soon as possible with another proof of purchase like a bank or credit card statement or try asking for store credit. At some stores, they can look up the receipt for you. They can actually pull up the receipt in their records. The biggest trend we've seen this holiday season is more stores shifting to emailed receipts. And it can actually be really helpful for consumers 
to track their receipts that way. With after holiday sales gearing up, if you see a better deal, you might be able to get some cash back on something you already bought. There are some ways in certain cases to get a refund. So for example, if you've opted into a program like Paribus or your credit card offers that price protection and you are within the time limit, you can sometimes get a refund. So it's always worth going to the store and asking because they might say yes and give you that price difference. Finally, turn unwanted gift cards into cash with apps like Raise and Cardpool, which now has gift card exchange kiosks inside stores like Target, where you can instantly turn your gift card into cash. Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Rebecca, thank you. Let's take a live look outside right now on this Saturday night from our IMS Pagoda camera. Kyle, that is a beautiful shot right there, and I'm sure that place is busy tonight. Yeah, got about a week left to check yeah. out the lights at the Brickyard, and then we're going to get into the new year, and hopefully we'll get in on a little more snow for some of the snow lovers out there. I was going to say, hopefully. <laughs> uh, you know, I am like just snow? fine with the temperatures uh, that we've had. We too. had a couple of rounds of snow already, so... Mm -hmm. I'd say we're good, don't yeah. you? But probably not. All right, right now we've got temperatures that are in the 50s, 55 degrees in Indianapolis, 58 in Bloomington, and 53 in Crawfordsville. So it was warm this afternoon, and it is still warm out there tonight. Those temperatures will settle to around 53 for the overnight low with those cloudy skies and some periods of rain. The rain will actually increase in coverage here as we go through tonight. Here's a look at Storm Team 6 radar. And you can see a few of those showers passing through parts of Hendricks County right through Danville at this point. Bainbridge, you had some light rain that's moving to the north and east. And we see a few more showers here through much of Greene County along 231. That'll move towards Spencer and southeastern portions of Owen County tonight. But here's a look at TrueCast. And as we go through the overnight and early tomorrow morning by 4 a.m., that's when the rain will become a little more widespread out there. And we'll have some periods of heavier rainfall, possibly a rumble of thunder or two here as we go through the first half of our Sunday. This is noon. Notice that we start to dry things out a little bit. So I do think we'll have some dry time through Sunday afternoon. But then into the evening hours, another wave of rain is going to be moving in from the south. This is TrueCast by 8 o'clock tomorrow night. So we are going to have more wet weather moving through, and we'll see that starting to really add up here. Flooding issues should not be too much of a problem for us, but something we'll keep an eye on. You notice as we go into Monday morning, just a couple of isolated showers left. As far as the rainfall potential, most models come get around an inch and a half to possibly two inches of rainfall for us, but the temperatures are going to be mild despite the rain. We'll actually be close to 60 as you head out the door in the morning and temperatures that will get into the lower 60s for the afternoon. Very close to the record of 66 degrees. I think we'll see a high in the city right around 63. Going forward, it does cool down here before we're out of 2019. On Monday, we've got 42. Chance for a few of those showers to linger, but it's also going to be windy both Monday and Tuesday. We could have those wind gusts around 30 miles per hour or higher, so that's going to make it feel even colder as we get into our Tuesday a 30% chance for some snow showers. Doesn't look like a big system for us, but we're getting a little taste of winter here. Doesn't look like it will last very long, but as we go into our Tuesday night and you get ready for those New Year's Eve plans, you are going to need to layer up as you head out. Looks like we'll be dry, mostly cloudy skies for you at 8 o'clock. 33 will be the temperature there. We'll start to thin out some of those clouds, and at midnight, ringing in the new year at 31. Seven-day planning forecast for you now, and there's the cool down. We'll go from 63 tomorrow to the 40s on Monday, and 36 on Tuesday, even down into the 20s for our lows as we go into New Year's Day. But the sunshine returns on Wednesday, and those temperatures will rebound to 42, and actually not looking too bad here Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Each of those days, high temperatures upper 40s to right around 50 degrees. Looks like we'll have another chance for some rain as we go into Thursday night and Friday, but it's not going to knock those temperatures down next weekend. So for everyone planning their New Year's Eve outfits, maybe do the warmer option. Not yeah, I'm going to need that, um, which is pretty typical for yeah. us. Yeah. All right, All Kyle, right. thank you so much. Well, blood banks are putting out an urgent call. They need donors now. Up next, the personal stories that might move you to take action. Be your new favorite furniture store. Public health experts are concerned that a shortage in blood supplies could get worse. Severe weather canceled blood drives and the holidays are causing supply levels to drop to critical levels. Usher Qureshi looks at what's being done about it. Yeah. 
For Medline employee Rhonda Hinks, giving blood is a celebration. On this day, she made her 100th donation. It doesn't take too long to give the blood. It always feels better to donate the blood than to need the blood. But regular donors like Hinks are a rarity. I'm hoping you're going to reach that point someday, too. While every two seconds someone in the U.S. needs blood, only 3% of the population donates. This time of year, it's really difficult because people are busy with holiday plans and they don't think about donating blood. Hinks and her co-workers gave 100 units of blood collectively in just six hours. In Enough to save some 300 lives. Drives like this are crucial to replenishing the nation's blood supply. Even more important at this moment, say public health officials, when there is a critical shortage. Right now, the Red Cross says it has less than a five-day supply of blood on hand. The blood is just come going out faster than it's coming in at this point. Shortages are being reported across the country, particularly of O-type blood known as the universal donor. We need to collect, I think it's 13,000 units of blood every single day to meet the needs across the whole country. In extraordinary cases like that of Sarah McFarland, who needed a new heart, liver, and kidney last year, the rare triple organ transplant required a large quantity of blood. When you add all three, it's a ton of blood. And I, I learned today that I got 10 um, units of blood while, during my surgery, which is huge. One reason her mother became a regular blood donor and her family started their own blood drives. Sarah happened to see how much she needed at that time, and we were just blown away. It's a need for which every drop collected could mean the difference between life and death. Reporting from Chicago, I'm Usher Qureshi. Usher, thank you. It's a big time of the year for new technology. Maybe you got a device as a gift or you're planning to take advantage of after Christmas sales. Before you set up gadgets like the Ring Doorbell, Alexa, or the Nest Thermostat, we have an important safety reminder for you. Experts say once you get a device on your Wi-Fi network, change the passwords. That goes for the device and Wi-Fi network itself. You might remember those recent cases of people hacking into home security cameras. That can happen when factory settings aren't changed or if you use the same password for everything and that gets compromised. Also, if a device offers a two-factor authentication, you use it. That would require someone signing in to use a phone number to verify their identity. We'll be right back after this break with a final check of your forecast. You Cherokee models and dealer stock. You still have plenty of time to recycle your Christmas tree in Marion County. There are designated recycling spots at nine Indianapolis parks open from dawn to dusk. Trees need to be free of ornaments, lights, and tinsel, and they have to be real. You can recycle your tree through January 31st in Marion County. We put the full list of drop-off sites in this story on the RTV6 app in the IndyChannel.com. When you think of celebrating New Year's Eve, the iconic Times Square ball drop might come to mind. That might be the most well-known, but other cities have some more creative ways to ring in the new year. Take Eastover, North Carolina, for example. It drops a 30-pound model of a flea named Jasper. The tradition is a nod to the town's old nickname, Flea Hill, which started after an infestation years ago. In Yuma, Arizona, they drop a head of iceberg lettuce. That area grows about 90% of the country's winter greens and you might not be surprised to learn that in Plymouth, Wisconsin, they drop a big wedge of cheese. The area claims to be the cheese capital of the world. And we used to do the Very IndyCar here, right? We did for a couple of yeah, years, couple I think years. it was. It just gets too cold here. We're it not does. as hardy, I guess, as those people in Wisconsin. Well, our temperatures are going to be dropping after another mild Sunday for us. We'll enjoy those numbers in the 60s, but it comes with some rain. Just 36 by Tuesday. All right, Kyle, thank you. And thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night at 6.